I didn't do really any research on thinking that I'm going to be Charlie Brown and I'm going out for the role of Charlie Brown, but I have seen most of the specials that came out, like the Great Pumpkin and the Christmas special. So I've seen the specials, but not really thinking I'm going to be Charlie Brown. So. But once you're in there, I mean, once you did get the part, did you go and do extra research? Did you rewatch? Did you rewatch a million times? What was the process for you? Well, my mom was showing me YouTube videos of how Charlie Brown sounds, but like, only like, I've only seen one of those YouTube videos, so I did some research, but not research way, where I didn't do too much research. But it's kind of just your voice too, right? Yeah. You're not really doing some yeah. other voice, it's just you. Yeah, just my normal. Well, that must be much easier probably yeah. to keep that consistent. And so what do you think um, your favorite type of line that Charlie says, or what's your favorite line you've recorded so far? I have two favorite lines, and it has one of my favorite lines has to be the original. Oh, good grief. <laughs> and, a good one. and my second favorite line, I actually shot this episode like last time I was there, Thursday, I think. Last Thursday, and it's, all I want is a Joe Schlebotnik bubblegum card. He's my hero. <laughs> it's, it's great to hear you because you, you obviously you're connecting to the character. It sounds like you're starting to learn a little bit more about what it is to be Charlie Brown. Do you find yourself in Charlie Brown at all or is Charlie Brown in you, your personality? Well, there's, there's things that I have in common with all of my, all the Peanuts characters. And this is kind of a joke, but it's pretty funny, so. One thing I have in common with all Peanuts characters is whenever my directors talk, my, Matthew and Michael, all I hear is wah, 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 wah. <laughs> <laughs> And one serious thing that I have in common with Charlie Brown is, Charlie Brown is a loyal friend. He, he won't give up on you if you make him mad or upset. So you can make him mad as many, as many times as you want, but he won't stop being your friend, so. Now what, what grade are you going into? Six. Into six, yeah. oh my goodness. So I just need to know what your favorite subject is. History. History. So this works, this is like yeah. the history of animation, right? <laughs> yeah. It kind of fits in. Okay, right. should we do this? We're gonna, we're gonna open up later for questions if anyone has it, but let's go ahead and talk to Bella. First, before we talk to Bella, we should go ahead and see a little bit of her playing music. I've come to you because lately I... Wait a minute. Before you begin, I must ask that you pay in advance. Five cents, please. Boy, what a sound. How I love to hear that old money clink. That beautiful sound of cold, hard cash. That beautiful, beautiful sound. Clink, clink, clink. Nickels, nickels, nickels. That beautiful sound of beautiful clinking nickels. All right, now what seems to be your trouble? <sighs> I have a question. What if your advice doesn't help me? Do I get my money back? No. No, because as soon as you pay me, I run right out and spend it. That's one of the first things they teach you in medical school. That's great. I love watching you. So, Bella, I watch your face while you're listening to that, because I assume you've seen that before. It's really funny. It's my favorite episode I've ever done, because it goes, like, to original lines from uh, the Christmas special, and I also get a singing part, which I had to act like a bad singer. <laughs> so you had to act, so I assume singing is your thing. You do enjoy singing. Yeah, I, yeah, I take lessons. Okay. Yeah. So, so... Since in that clip, I thought I, a lot of people don't love hearing their own voice. Do you love watching it and love how, to see how it fits the animation? Well, um, when I was younger, I used to hate hearing myself sing. I used to be like so paranoid. I'm like, ugh, I sound so terrible. It's the video quality. But now I think, I, but now I think I'm not that bad. I think I'm good. Yeah, that's good. 
confidence is good, and so is assertiveness. Lucy's slightly assertive. Would you find yourself to be Lucy-ish? Um, well, if I get mad, then yeah, but I usually um, don't punch my brother, and I don't steal his blanket, and I, um, and I don't call him stupid all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think, and I don't always try to make him move from the TV when I want to watch the TV, so, because I have a brother. He's older than me, though. So it fits, kind yeah. of. It's yeah. just that you're much nicer, I'm learning. <laughs> Lucy's a little rough, is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, she's very crabby. She can be <laughs> really mean. And, but I think it's really fun to play her because, I mean, even though I'm not really like that in real life, I think that sometimes it can just be really funny to just let out all that crabbiness in the acting. So. Yeah, it is. It's a, good, it's a good exercise to get it out, right? Yeah. Now, is it is it much of a stretch, or have you have you learned something that you could take from Lucy's bad attitude, crabbiness, or overall character? Have you learned anything from her? I've learned that um, that you can always be you can't always be crabby, but I mean, I mean, every once in a while you can get crabby, but I'd say what I've learned from her is that. She can give some good advice in the psychiatric booth, and I mean, she's very smart. She's very smart, and whenever she's in a good mood, then she can be very nice. And I'd say she kind of knows how to work a room like you might. <laughs> I'm assuming you can do that. <laughs> I've heard you're, you're a pretty good talker. They, they mentioned that. Oh, thank you. So do you guys get to do a lot together? Well, I mean, we don't record right. in the same room together, but I mean, yeah, 